Okay, here we begin our last unit, macroemergent properties from organs to organisms. In this unit, we take a look at how organs interact in complex ways in organisms to produce um, the amazing properties that living things have insides of their bodies. And then we look at competition and cooperation between organisms and biological systems. And then lastly, we look at naturally occurring diversity among and between components of biological systems that work in the environment. So these are the topics we're going to talk about in this unit. Living things have complex properties due to interactions of their parts. That, and then communities are composed of populations of organisms that interact in complex ways. And the interactions among uh, living things with their environment results in movement of matter and energy through the environment. Uh, interactions with between and within populations influence patterns of species distribution and abundance, like where things live. And distribution of local and global ecosystems oh, does on Earth change over time. That's because planet the planet changes, the Earth's crust is moving, etc. Environmental factors influence the expression of a genotype of an organism, which in turn affects fitness levels and where they can survive and where they're best uh, suited. The level of variation of population affects population dynamics, and the diversity of a species within an ecosystem may influence the stability you know, of the ecosystem. So uh, this first part of the chapter, we go into... Uh, the interactions of organs in organ systems. So what we have now, it says, a living organism has complex properties due to interactions of its internal parts. Organs interact with each other to produce successful system function in an organism. A mouth is an organ. The esophagus is an organ. The stomach's an organ. The small intestine's an organ, the large intestine's an organ, the spleen is an organ, the, lip, the, the pancreas is an organ. Each one of these organs does something complementarily to the others around it to produce the phenomenon we call digestion. Uh, the mouth starts chemical digestion. Uh, basically, it lubricates food and it masticates it, which means it chews it up. Swallowing basically raises the larynx into the epiglottis, that's up here, so that the wind tube is sealed off and then food passes from the oral cavity down to the esophagus and not the windpipe. So the food comes down the esophagus then. The windpipe here is sealed off. The food can't get down it. So the food goes down to the stomach. In the stomach, uh, bacteria are killed and the um, stomach works with the small intestine to success successfully break down the macromolecules of food and absorb them into the bloodstream. The stomach receives food from the esophagus. M most of its polymers, polymeric meaning it's made of polymers. The stomach basically secretes hydrochloric acid to lower the pH uh, for other chemicals inside. Pepsin is a major protease inside the stomach which is responsible for breaking down proteins. Pepsin only works at low pH. So the hydrochloric acid creates an environment for pepsin to work. Pepsin basically breaks proteins into smaller polypeptides. From there, the food moves from the stomach to the small intestine in spurts. The small intestine receives secretions from the pancreas to basically aid in the hydrolysis of polymers and neutralize stomach acid. The liver sends bile to the small intestine to emulsify fat. The liver is here, and it's basically draining a bile to the gallbladder. The gallbladder squirts it on the secretions as they shoot from the stomach into the small intestine. Bile helps to dissolve fat in solution so that the um, lipids in there can be hydrolyzed into fatty acids and glycerol. So as the food is hydrolyzed to monomers, the small intestine absorbs those monomers through what are called villi. Villi are the little tiny uh, hairs, like finger-like projection uh, projections that are on the inner surface of the, of the intestines. The, the blood then absorbs the hydrophilic substance in the bloodstream, and the lacteal absorbs the hydrophobic substances into the lymphatic system. Uh, and basically then the nutrients are being transported around the body. The large intestine basically gets the stuff that the small intestine couldn't break down, 
holds it, pulls out most of the remaining water and salts, and then once that food gets down here into the rectal area, it then is pushed from the body through the anus. So that's a lot of interaction, and that's just one of the human systems. Uh, interactions and coordinations between different systems provides all kinds of essential biological activities. Uh, interactions between different systems provides essential functions. Uh, circulatory system interacts with the digestive system to distribute nutrition to body cells. The circulatory system all, also works with the respiratory system to distribute nutrients. The airways, the nasal cavity, the pharynx uh, at number eight down here, the uh, epiglottis, the glottis, the tongue area here, the, the, it says the, all of these things, like the epiglottis seals the top of the trachea during swallowing. That's this right here. So this, a muscular ring pulls this whole section up and this actually swings down and this is sealed off during swallowing. So the food has to go down this way and not down this way. So let's go over here and erase that. Now let's scroll this up a little bit so we can see it better. Okay, here we go. There we go. Now, the let's see. Uh, I'll go up here and get the pen. The alveoli are the tiny little uh, air sacs down in the lungs that allow for gas exchange. Each alveolus is surrounded by a tiny little capillary net. Blood from the body is pumped into the capillary beds around those alveoli, and it changes color. Hemoglobin in this the lung capillaries becomes about 95% saturated with oxygen in the one second that it goes through the capillary net of the alveoli. The blood then goes back to the left side of the heart and it's pumped to the rest of the body. We basically breathe in and out maybe 12 to 16 times a minute and uh, in so doing we oxygenate our blood uh, sufficiently to survive. It, it's the interactions of the respiratory system with the circulatory system with the digestive system the lymphatic system the immune system etc cetera, etc cetera, that allows uh, a human body to actually uh, be alive so air passing through all these tubes reaching the lungs and exchanging with the blood is a major deal for an organism like a human um, note i should mention here's how the lungs work internally the Here's the nasal cavity. Air is passing down into the pharynx area. From there, it goes down the windpipe. Uh, digestive food goes down the esophagus. This is a cartilage rib tube. This is called the trachea. The air from the trachea branches to two bronchi. The bronchi branch into the lungs into bronchioles, which eventually branch into alveoli. These little grape-like structures are alveoli. The alveoli are surrounded by a capillary net. The blue blood is coming from the uh, right side of the heart. When it gets around the capillaries, the, the carbon dioxide that we talked about previously is diffuses from the blood into the lung air. The whole carbon dioxide equilibrium shifts from bicarbonate and protons to uh, carbon dioxide. At that point, simultaneously, oxygen from the lung air diffuses into the blood. It changes to red. In one second, then, it comes out and it goes towards the left side of the heart where it's going to then be pumped from the left side of the heart to the entire body. There are uh, hundreds of millions of these alveoli in each in the lungs, and they make up the surface area of approximately a single tennis court. And that's what's required to make a human body operate in terms of oxygenation without sufficient capillary um, exchange on your alveoli, you would go into shock and die. Shock is lack of oxygenation to body tissues. So the human heart interacts with all this by pumping the blood around the capillary beds of the alveoli and the body cells. So the heart is a, is a double pump. Uh, we talked about this in a previous unit also. It, we have double circulation in mammals. Uh, reptiles and amphibians have one and a half circulations Birds and mammals have double circulation. Fish have single circulation. Basically, the human atria of the heart receive blood from either the lungs or the body. 
they pass the blood to the ventricles. The ventricles then pump the blood uh, out through large tubes, which would, would be the aorta or the pulmonary artery. Uh, and you aorta know that. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Blue blood from the body travels to the right side of the heart through the vena cava to be pumped to the lungs via the pulmonary artery. Meanwhile, red blood from the lungs travels to the uh, left side of the heart to be pumped through the pulmonary or goes through the pulmonary vein to the heart and then it goes out the aorta. So let's look at these diagrams, which are probably a better way to talk about this. So here's the heart first. Let's go over the heart structure itself. Uh, where's my marker? Right there. Okay. So this it's left and right or backwards because this is the way it would exist in a patient. The patient's facing you, uh, thumb out, palms forward. So the patient's right is over here, the patient's left is over here, and this is the heart in the patient's body. See, it's even oriented the same way. Blue blood coming from the lower body and the brain and uh, upper torso drains into the right atrium. The right atrium drains to the right ventricle. <clears throat> the right ventricle pumps it out. Half of it goes to one lung, the other half goes to the other lung. In the lungs, the blue blood changes color, becomes red. There's an interaction with another system. From the lungs, the blood comes back through these veins. These are pulmonary veins coming in from the uh, right and left sides. They drain into the left atrium. The blood from the left atrium goes to the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, blood shoots out the aorta, and the aorta branches blood basically to the entire body except the lungs. Uh, at the top here, blood is going to the arms and the head. And then when the aorta comes down the backside, blood shoots out uh, different uh, arteries and goes to all types of organs in the abdominal cavity. Eventually, the aorta branches into two femoral arteries. That one goes into each leg, and ultimately, it finishes its branching in the feet, where it's branching out into the final tiny uh, arteries of the human foot. So that's how the heart uh, itself works. Now let's look at the entire diagram of the human body. Scroll this down a little bit. In terms of color change, blood, here's the heart, blood from the body comes in, this is the right side of the heart here, goes into the right atrium, right ventricle, gets pumped to the lungs. In the lung capillaries, the blood changes color. Remember, it's in there for one second, turns to red, carbon dioxide is exhaled, oxygen is, is uh, uh, diffused into the blood. The blood then goes to, through these pulmonary veins, back to the left atrium, then to the left ventricle. Left ventricle pumps blood all the way out to the arteries of the body, everywhere except the lungs. And there the blood changes from red back to blue. And, the, and it starts over again. In this diagram on the left over here, we, what we have is um, a scheme of a diagram or a scheme of the entire body. You're looking at all of the branches of the circulatory system uh, of the whole body. The circulatory system is intimately associated with all body parts because it has to supply all body parts with oxygenated blood and drain waste products um, of deoxygenated blood back to the heart and then get that to the lungs. So you can see, you know, this is the aorta coming down. This is a subclavian artery going into an arm, subclavian artery going into an arm. We've got, you know, carotid arteries going into the head up here. That's the red stuff. I'm sorry, the red one's the subclavian artery. The blue one, subclavian veins. Um, up in the uh, brain, you have uh, like even the circle of Willis, which they don't show here, which is a circular artery that feeds the cerebrum. Down below here, these are the femoral arteries going to the legs, and the blue things are the femoral veins coming up. Renal arteries and veins supply the kidney. Celiac arteries uh, supply the internal stomach and intestines, and so on and so forth. So the circulatory system is intimately associated with um, the uh, functions of all body organs in the human body. Next, we're going to go to communities, but I'm going to talk about that in the next screen lecture.